Welcome, everybody. This is Marcus Trees, it's Tyson Power Platform uh, bi weekly community call, and it is February 1st. Uh, we are already on the second month of the year. So, one for uh, one twelfth of the year has been already completed, which is really, really cool. My name is Sasha Yuvonen. I'm a principal product manager in Microsoft Trees, it's five platform uh, areas, and working together with our Power Platform friends and Azure friends and all of that stuff. So, a lot of, lot of stuff uh, happening in the Microsoft Cloud. Now, today uh, we will go to uh, uh, on the agenda, we'll go through the latest updates on the community community efforts, uh, projects uh, and, and uh, things, uh, and also the other things like, for example, Microsoft Teams Toolkit. We'll also go through the latest samples across the Microsoft script samples, Microsoft Teams samples, and the Power Platform samples. And then we will do the together mode uh, today. It seems to be working today, which is really, really good. At least right now, the pixelation is not there, which is awesome. We've been having a bit of a problem with that uh, recently within these calls. Uh, and then after the picture time, which is happening roughly 12 past, 13 past, to actually go to the, actually, the real stars of today, who are HS, Marcus, and Chris. So, and Asia is going to talk about start first on how building your Microsoft Craft custom connector for Microsoft Learn Catalog API. Now, the cool thing about Microsoft Craft connectors is that it is also an extensibility model for Microsoft Copilot. So, it's one of the options of feeding the engine and the Copilot uh, or the Microsoft 365 and the, your data, and then the Copilot can reason based on that data because it is inside of the search. So that's why it's actually a really, really cool setup. Uh, Mark is going to talk about the uh, Teams meeting and install Teams meeting app, uh, really, really cool uh, stuff as well. And then again, we will see what Chris is coming up with the list formatting things. Uh, I can't wait on that one. Now, a few assets what we have available to get started. We are always showing the slide, but that is highly intentional. There's always new people joining on this course, and it's really, really important that you know where to get started. As you're looking into getting started, for example, on the Teams development, I think Hugo had that question, and, and Bob was answering that in the chat as we started the call. Uh, on the video side, uh, most of the most of the videos what we're just getting published is at the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Community Video Channel. We do have uh, at least one video released every single day. I I think today we released three different videos because we released some new tutorials related on pot powered Viva connection aces. Uh, we also have our LinkedIn group for discussion, so asking help and sharing our findings. We also have open source, a lot of samples in the GitHub. Um, and then as the GitHub might be a hard place to find the relevant sample for you, we also have these sample galleries, which is making it super easy to, to go to a one location or a few locations and then really find the relevant sample for you. So don't start from scratch. Try to see if you can find a sample. You can maybe keep that sample open in an, another window or a screen, and then you start copying and innovating your on based on your business requirements. All of the URLs, all of the assets, everything else available at AKMS Community Home. Now, you are in the community calls, so you might be familiar about these community calls, uh, which is really, really cool. So we have quite a lot of them, and uh, at least two community calls happening every single week. So two calls being the Microsoft 365 Power Platform uh, with Microsoft speakers happening on each Tuesday at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And then we have the Thursday series, which is either this call, which is Microsoft 365 Power Platform call, or the Viva Connection and SharePoint Framework call. Uh, so that's cycling on every single Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific time. And then on top of that, we have the Power Platform and Office Settings monthly mm -hmm. community calls. All of these have a lot of attendees, which is really, really cool. Um, and the attendance is growing uh, across the board which is awesome, awesome. And we are always looking for your feedback and ideas. So how can we further improve this course as well? All of the course uh, can be downloaded as a recurrent invite at AKMS Community Course. And you can also see the agendas few days or a week advance always at the meetup. So the meetup is really nice service if you subscribe or register to the meetup, which is free, you will get always an email whenever we are uh, sharing the agenda details for the next week's call. So you will get a notification on, hey, next week, this call is happening. This is the agenda details. Okay, that's really cool. So you can prioritize your time based on that. Now, next Tuesday, uh, Yes, that is an interesting uh, alignment on the on the screen, but that's fine. Um, that's something what I'll fix later on. Uh, but next Tuesday, uh, we actually have three cool demos. Uh, two of them being on Microsoft Copilot. Copilot being the super hot thing, but a little bit, little bit a different perspective. So, Carrie Pretty uh, uh, is going to talk about the Copilot Studio, and this is the low code, no code option of creating your first Copilot uh, Copilots, uh, which are then integrated using the low code, no code options. Uh, I got. 
uh, Aisha Bass is going to talk about extending Copilot Microsoft 365 by ingesting GitHub repositories and issues using Python. So if you're a Python developer, you can absolutely build your own graph connectors and then uh, get the information inside uh, of the Microsoft 365 Copilot, and Aisha is going to cover, cover that. And then Mark Windel, uh, Windel is going to show getting started with SharePoint Embedded, uh, really very cool topic as well. Now we are looking always volunteers for these demos, uh, for these calls, for the demos. So just to be clear on that. Uh, so everything, uh, most of the community calls have an option uh, for community powered the demos, and those are incredibly, incredibly useful because we want to learn from each other. So, and we as a Microsoft, we also need to know what you built. And this is exactly why we want to have this demo. So we want to understand what people are building, what they're finding, or maybe you tested out some new feature and, and uh, you share your findings around the feature. So this doesn't have to be rocket science. This doesn't have to be like latest open source efforts which are shared in GitHub, not at all. Something like you're thinking uh, on a solution which you were building using, let's say Microsoft Teams and Power Apps, blah, 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 whatever comes to mind, what is what could be useful for other people, please sign up uh, and share your findings. We also have our Serving is Caring initiative, and I will double check, is Hugo on the call? Hugo, 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 Hugo. Hugo Hugo's here. No. Which Hugo? Is he here? Oh, no, different Hugo. Hugo. <laughs> there we go. So cool. Bo is, is shaking hand, shaking head. Different Hugo. Thank you, Hugo, as well. Now, sharing scaring initiative is here to help you. Uh, if you're thinking on or you don't feel comfortable or, on doing those demos, um, or you want to learn to, for example, start using the GitHub uh, samples. So our sharing scaring initiative is really designed for that one. It's been a little bit on pause. We're trying to get it back online. Um, it's highly dependent also on volunteers and MVP availability, uh, but we're trying to get more sessions scheduled uh, within this uh, spring, starting from February, March, and all of that. But this is really for making sure that er everybody feels like they can start consuming or the assets which we have available in GitHub or start uh, implementing stuff uh, in the uh, in the Microsoft 365 from Power Platform. Uh, more on that at AKMS Sharing is Caring. Now, as you then get learned uh, or get familiar on contributing, uh, we always award you uh, the contributors with batches. So if you do a community call demo, if you do a contribution in a GitHub, you can sign up for a patch. And this is the Credly service, the same Credly service, which is used by many, many, many other organizations to validate or get those batches, which you're going to share within your LinkedIn profile or within a social media. And this is a great way of showing your activities and contributions for the other people within the community. Uh, but we need to always for you to sign up. So this works in a way that you contribute or you participate in some sort of things and then, uh, or you do a community called demo as an example. And then as long as you sign up by registering on that URL, we can provide you a batch uh, based on your contribution. So the address is AKMS community recognition, more details on that URL as well. Now let's then move to the project specific uh, updates. I think we have Bert Janssen uh, doing a quick updates on PMP.NET libraries first. Yes, thank you, Visa. Um, so on the .NET side, a uh, couple of changes. Um, on the core SDK side, uh, we had two bug fixes. Uh, one around uh, there's a method to get the the ID of a term, uh, which failed when it was repeatedly used uh, without clearing. Uh, the, so that's fixed. Uh, another one was setting the view type too, which is like a property of a view where you can pick, for example, like a Kanban layout. Uh, and uh, setting that failed as well, which is fixed now. On the framework side, uh, Nils and Reason did a couple of fixes uh, which emerged today. Um, one is around uh, the Viva announcement library. Uh, so Viva announcement, um, for with Viva, we have an, a new version. We have announcements. Announcements are stored in a second pages library in the root side collection of your tenant, which kind of uh, broke the page library detection logic uh, uh, in PMP framework, which is fixed now. And the other thing is like a small GUID fix um, by Nils as well. So yeah, moving forward there, good progress. Um, let's now move to Gautam for the PowerShell side. Thank you all. Yes, and then Gautam, your turn. Thank, thank you, yo, 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 PNP PowerShell in the house. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, what's new in PNP PowerShell? We added batch support to add PNP group member command. We also added the improved support for multi geo in add PNP hub site association. Uh, besides that, we also added two commands uh, get PNP file analytics data and get PNP file PNP site analytics data. So you can retrieve analytics for, some, for specific files as well as for specific site collections as well. Uh, besides that, SharePoint embedded is a new flavor of the season. So we added a bunch of commands to new PNP. In, like new PNP container type, restore PNP deleted container, as well as removing of support for removing of the container type as well. Uh, one other interesting command that we added was this get PNP web permission command. And uh, yeah, uh, besides that, uh, usage is quite stable. Uh, 11.5 million downloads, so quite quite happy with that. And uh, yeah, by the way, if you are <coughs> yeah, if you are into this, uh, if you're more, if your organization is more uh, specific about security, there has been there was a minor security related update as well inside in the one of the projects as well for PNP PowerShell. So uh, do check out the latest nightly builds as well. So yep, that's basically from my end. Over to you, uh, Excellent. Pesa. Yeah, I, David or Esa, you know, it doesn't really matter. We looked exactly the same. So, um, uh, 11.5 million downloads. That's pretty pretty cool. That's that's really awesome. And 100 miss 140 million command lists per day. That's insane. Now, uh, let's then move to the Teams Toolkit. Uh, uh, quick recap on that side. I can quickly see that John is unfortunately not in the call. Uh, so I'm going to uh, cover this one. So Teams Toolkit VS Code 5.4 is the latest, which is available. There was an AI Assistant bot app template uh, using a Teams AI library introduced over there. And then previews on the Edit Adaptive Cards affordance using the Adaptive Card Preview. This is really, really cool uh, capability. Uh, directly within the Visual Studio Code, you are able to uh, design your Adaptive Cards. So don't have to go to the card designer. Uh, Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio uh, 17.9 Preview 3 is the latest version in there that's catching off kind of the VS Code. It's two different versions. And then you can use the Teams Toolkit CLI as well for automation, for example, CDSCI as well. A lot of, lot of stuff there. Now, uh, John is always asking uh, if you have feedback, if you have ideas, do uh, reach out to him and the team using HTTPS AKMS forward slash TTK dash chat. Uh, that's, that's basically one way of of uh, reaching out for the PMs who are building Teams Toolkit and giving them ideas and input on what is being needed. Now, then let's move into the Craft Toolkit. I can, this, I can see Sepp on the call. Absolutely. Thanks, Vesa. So um, we are um, hours away from our V4 release. Um, you can already test it by installing our next packages. We're bringing um, really, really a good development experience uh, set of updates. To the graph toolkit you can actually see was it last week uh, that i came um onto the tuesday, tuesday call and i presented on what's new so have a look over there go on youtube go into the uh the youtube channel and and look into it there's a, a bunch of details a bunch of demos that we did um, um a week ago so i'll invite you to go there um then afterwards what's next we're still working on our uh, microsoft graph toolkit chat component it's getting Closer, we're even getting a, 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 a chat list component that was uh, contributed by the community. So um, we're really getting closer to um, um, getting that uh, to be um, fully available in GA. It's already available in public preview. Feel free to go and start playing around and <laughs> include Microsoft Teams chat inside your, um, your applications uh, like that. So. How can you help? Come and fill bugs, share your feedback, new feature requests. Come to our repo, ak.ms slash mgt. Back to you, Vesa. Excellent. Thank you, Seb. On that one, directly from Canada and Finland taking over. Now, we're throwing the discussion across the pond. This brilliant technology is awesome. Now, directly from UK, Paul Bollock. Hey, everybody. So, Script Samples is a repository where you can share your PowerShell scripts with the community. So covering tools like the Microsoft Graph, PMP PowerShell, and many, many more. So uh, as I say, Happy New Year. Oh, well, it's February already. So uh, um, And we've got a bumper pack of uh, updates as well. So we've got four new samples or updates. So this is the Get Unified log for SharePoint DLP Exchange and Intra by Reshmi. Uh, we've got updated scenarios for the CLI for Microsoft 365. So three from Ganesh Snap, which is uh, super cool. So add multiple files to libraries and CSV file. Uh, add dummy folders and uh, 
files to a SharePoint library and uh, add bulk users to SharePoint groups uh, from a CSV file. So these are now these are existing samples that now include uh, a, a Microsoft CLI uh, for 365 element to that. And finally, we've got this monster update. So he's been <laughs> super busy on the repository where he's done 60 plus sample uh, uh, quality updates and meta tagging, things like that. So if you're looking for a sample, you can also search by its commandlet as well. Uh, to see what samples potentially are out there for that. So he's helped with keeping that up to date and uh, and, and doing a quality release. So huge thank you to uh, to him on, on, on doing all that work. And again, thank you for all the contributions that come through the library. Uh, it's, it's super cool to see these this, this growing over time. Uh, there is a badge as well. So if you are interested in contributing, there is a badge. We've got some, some new ones for 2024 in the pipeline. So we're uh, looking forward to getting those released. And if you need anything, uh, Feel free to ping me on a, on the issues list or uh, DM me on the uh, social media channels. Uh, back back to you, uh, Vesa. Excellent, thank you, Paul, on that one. Ganesh and 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 really really worked on a lot of stuff in here. Thank you, Ganesh, on that one, and of course, Rashmi as well for great new contributions. Now let's then jump on the Microsoft team samples. Uh, Bob is not here to cover this one, uh, but uh, there's a a collaborative mind map sample available, which really shows the use of fluid framework to provide a collaborative experience. And this is contributed by Bob, Peter Paul Kishner. So thank you for that one. It is a really really cool. The fluid framework actually gives you the capability of having a real time collaboration in the Microsoft Teams, for example, or a website, uh, as you can see from the GIF animation. So really, really awesome job on that one. And I will definitely have a look on how that actually works and how it's implemented. Great, great, great. And then on the Power Platform samples, uh, we do have Katarina on the call, I think, covering uh, the latest yes. updates in Europe. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Vesa. Hey, everyone. So we have uh, three cool new Power Platform samples for you today. Um, first, uh, April Dunam made uh, a weekly timesheet template a smart solution for managing time cards with ease. Then Ara Shahadjani created a fun Sudoku game. It's uh, super addictive. And third, Kinga Kazala designed a license calculator to simplify your power apps license decisions and budgeting. Thanks a lot to April, Arash, and Kinga for their awesome work. And I encourage everyone to check this out and uh, share your own cool stuff too. Back to you, Vesa. Excellent. Thank you, Katarina, on that one. I don't know which one is more addictive, the license calculator or the Sudoku. Uh, uh, so, you uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I spent cool. a lot Thank you for that. Uh, playing with them. Yeah. <laughs> I can, yes, I yes, I love Sudoku as well. Uh, if only there would be more time. Uh, anyway, so let's then move on to the Keto mode uh, and do a group photo uh, with the people who are willing to enable the camera. Right now, we are in a really, really clean position here. Uh, big, no pixelation. This is really good. I'm not going to enable my camera, so upstream will not mess up things. Is that Paul? Uh, Paul in the middle? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, there's Katarina, Leon. Yeah, I can. A lot of familiar faces here. Um, Show on the back row, yeah, yeah, all good. We have 50 seats in a room. Uh, oh, and teddy bear, that is always good to be in the in the call as well. 50 seats uh, for those who are willing to enable the camera. We'll let's wait a few more seconds before we start recording. Um, and it's really bright today and precise. This is good. This is really good. Not yet recording. Now, Sip, I'm putting on you. Show how it's going to be done on the front row. You're almost now on the second row. There we go. And I will put one, two, three moving and we'll capture a key animation out of this. And there we go. And Zip on the second row showing how it can be done. Thanks everybody for joining. We'll share this one in the cafe and get in the in the social media for sure. Really, really cool. There we go. <laughs> Good, good to see familiar faces and, and smiling faces, if nothing uh, for sure. Cool, cool. And uh, that's it for the crew photo. We'll share that one in social media, but let's then move to the actual demos of the day. We're a few, a few minutes behind of the schedule, but that's okay. Uh, and let's move it to HS uh, and start with the Microsoft Craft custom connectors. Uh, thanks, Vesa. Mm, let me share my screen. Yep. Uh, let me know you can see my screen. We got your screen. Take it away. Yeah, thank you. Sweet. Cool. So, um, hi guys, my name is Ija Azusen. Um, I'm a uh, recently Microsoft MVP uh, and developer architect, uh, work at a company called Advania UK. Uh, so today uh, I'm uh, presenting a session on Microsoft Graph Connectors and how can we uh, 
you know, the bridge the gap between your Microsoft 365 uh, ecosystem and your video external data using the Microsoft Graph connectors. Uh, so what we're going to look today uh, quickly, uh, we're going to see what the Microsoft, Microsoft Graph connectors are, benefits, uh, things to keep in mind when building uh, custom Microsoft Graph connectors. Uh, then we're going to look into the actual building the uh, Microsoft, um, my, uh, custom Microsoft Graph connector with the Microsoft Learn Catalog API. Then we talk about the integration with the Copilot, which is a quite naturally, but we'll talk about briefly. And then we'll do a look at the demo as well. So let's jump in. So, uh, so Microsoft Graph Connect is basically it's literally connecting the dots. So basically, you you can see on the right hand side. You know, you have uh, you might have a different data sources uh, across your organization, uh, and uh, at the moment they are not in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. And how do you want to bring this into uh, uh, the the Microsoft 365 ecosystem and make uh, and get the benefit of you know the enrich Microsoft intelligent Microsoft Search and the Microsoft Graph. So the one way of doing it is to use the Microsoft Graph connector. So it lets you bring that your external data data from the content from the external data sources in Microsoft uh, Microsoft Search and uh, and then you know the uh, uh, the Microsoft Copilot comes into play as well. So this is what is all about. Microsoft Graph connectors let you bring external data into Microsoft Search. Uh, now the benefits are yes, it's gonna you'll be able to make use of intelligent Microsoft Search. Uh, on um, uh, you, you'll be able to search your external data right from your Microsoft uh, 365 platform. Uh, it, it's in the preview at the moment, so I'm not sure where we are. Uh, the last time I checked, uh, you you will be able to have your uh, context IQ in the Outlook as well. Um, uh, when uh, when you're writing the email or something, you want some uh, data to inject while you're writing the email. You can reference your data, uh, which which technically is your external data. If it's available uh, in the uh, noise available in an Office 365, you can reference that. You can call that. Uh, it will be um, uh, available. Copilot will uh, naturally go and can can look for that data if it's available. In in Microsoft 365, uh, 365 platform, the copilot naturally can go and grab and uh, reason and search that data for you. And uh, you know the main benefit is basically automation, streamlining the workflow. So, um, for example, you have a some uh, some uh, you know you 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 can uh, you're searching for your latest invoice and you know what are the pending invoice, one is active invoice. So that data might, you know previously in the past used to be an external system. Nine Office 365, Microsoft 365. You can you know either you can access via Teams or from other uh, uh, from the search. You can query that data. You can if it's in the Teams and through the Copilot, then you of course you can build some external plugin to act. Add more action and uh, on on that data as well. So yes, so the, you, you basically help you to streamline your workflows and and processes. Things to keep in mind when building the custom connectors. There are some limitation. Um, yeah, uh, when you when you uh, it, there are thirty connections you can build. Uh, there are uh, there's a lot item level. Um, uh, limits, there's five million uh, items you can have per connection. Then there's a total tenant item, 50 million. So yeah, keep you know it's it's good to be kind of a exploring those options, but good to have to keep the uh, some limitation in mind. There is a data limitation as well. How big the item, one item could be, you know, and then the batching size, and then also things consideration like a licensing quota. And, and throttling, etc., as well. So, um, you know, so there is always things to keep in mind when you are building custom connectors. Right. So now there are hundreds of uh, out of the box available connectors out there. So check on this link, uh, which you can make use. Like for example, IO services, Box services, now Sales services, Salesforce. Uh, and there's a hundred plus connectors out there, and ye, they're out of the box. You can just configure uh, configure those and uh, start using those. You don't have to kind of think about building any code, uh, write any code for those, and also uh, build any. Um, uh, you know the 
the indexing schedule, indexing uh, mechanism behind the scene, like a full crawl, increment crawl. So everything is done behind the scene for you. So, but there will be a, some scenario where you know those connectors does not meet your uh, business needs. So you 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 will have some scenario where you you want to support some data which which is purely for your company data or your system uh, is and there's no connector available. This is where the custom connectors comes into play. You can build custom connector to build your own custom system into the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So now when we talk about the building the Microsoft Graph Connector, so there are uh, there are actually three things in there. Uh, so we create external connection. So with an external connection, we define the connection, we define the schema, what type of properties, uh, what type of data you wanted to bring in, and then you define the external item. So each item that is typically, you could say a, a record. So each record will have some properties, uh, actual content you want to ingest into Maxo 365, ACL uh, or the permission, uh, uh, what kind of permission you wanted to implement on each item. Uh, this is very, really, really cool. Like you can you can define the permission in ACLs like uh, it should be accessed by everyone or certain uh, group of people. Uh, you can define add the, uh, your AD groups there as well. So it depends uh, how do you want to expose the external system. It might be certain audience uh, or might the whole whole organization can see this and then some activities as well. So yeah, so this is um, build, uh, some key components. So then external we we bring that we connect to the external uh, uh, con uh, content bring in structure create a structure like a property defined content acl and activities and then uh, and that's become our item and then this is what we ingest so if you go and look like a building all together what's that look like so we have a microsoft graph we have registered my uh, your ad app connector code and then external content so we grab the data we um, uh, we have got authentication from the Microsoft Graph, and then we convert the external data into like a uh, in 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 a form that uh, we can ingest that like defining all the properties, metadata, ACL, etc., and permissioning, and then uh, uh, create a connection and ingest into Microsoft 365. So today we the custom connector we're going to build a uh, demo or build is on the Microsoft Learn Catalog API. Now, if you have uh, not explored before, is a publicly available API. It's a REST based uh, and is pub uh, and is is bring is provide you uh, information about the max modules, uh, max of learn modules, units, certification, learning paths, courses, exams, uh, and it sends you back JSON and uh, encoded response. So, uh, it's. This is the endpoint, so you can uh, you can go ahead and play around. This one is the same. Uh, yeah, is it is it publicly available, so you don't have any key or, or whatsoever. So it's good, good good API to play around for your demo purposes. So what we're doing today is in terms of the demo is that we have um, uh, so I have created a Microsoft Graph connector um, to bring the data from the Microsoft cat, Learn cat, sorry uh, catalog API. But I've also and ingested into Microsoft 365. But I also added one more option to where I wanted to control that, uh, like a switching in, switching off the connector from the Microsoft 365 Teams admin. So you can, uh, I can show you in a minute. So you can toggle. Uh, you turn on the toggle. It will go ahead and create a connection for you, ingest the data. And if you don't wanna, uh, if you wanna delete that connector and you know you don't want to have that to be available to your to your organization you can simply switch off Microsoft 365 admin teams and it will remove the connection remove the data and uh, yeah you can control from that side as well so I'll, I'll show you in a bit so the main features of this one is integration with Microsoft Teams admin center which I've seen a full crawl uh, and then on demand ingestion of data and some of the adaptive card I've used to to show uh, what kind of uh, you know the UI you can build based on what you require. So let's look at the demo first quickly. Um, so if I go to the SharePoint search, you could see here um, I have a new um, vertical Microsoft Learn module. So I can go ahead and say Azure, let's say Azure function. I wanted to search modules related to some Azure functions. So you could see here. This is uh, bringing back the similar kind of results, uh, the module name, 
and etc. And if I can click on it and it take me to the actual uh, the module of that and you can see the more detail and stuff. So you can have it like a rules, show you the how long this course for some ratings. And if I show you the actual uh, Microsoft Learn uh, page, this is exactly what is there happening here. So I'm just using the API and, and that data is now available into my Microsoft 365 um, ecosystem. So now, how do we get to this? So this is what you see here. This is a, a, a adaptive card, so you can use any adaptive card. So I've used adaptive card to build this UI. So how do we get to this point? So let's go to code um, and I'm also open the Microsoft Teams Admin Center as well. So I want to show you the uh, specialty option with the um, handling this in Microsoft Team Admin Center. Uh, so if I go to my Teams app, manage Teams app, and to quickly uh, learn. Uh, three sixty five. No. Yeah, just give me a second. Let me just check the name of the uh, uh, um, app package. So I'll just get the name of that. My so all three sixty five MS Learn. So just grab this. Control C. So I should be able to search this. Yeah, there you go. So if I go in here and click on uh, so we have some if so I'll show you the permissions come from so I'll go to the graph connectors so it's going to go and try to if, you could, if the connection has been established you can see you have now this connection status so once you turn on the connection it go and create a connection for you in just the data and ready to go and if you switch it off it will automatically go and delete the connector for you uh, and then uh, it will not data will not be available in your Microsoft 365. So you have a control on switch off button here. So how do we get to uh, this place? So first of all, if I show you the quickly um, manifest file. So in here, the main thing is uh, I have um, notification URL here uh, and send the uh, your AD app running behind the scene. So in here, I have this my notification my Azure function URL. So what happened here is. Uh, when we switch on, when we switch this on, this endpoint get called, and this endpoint code is notification content. And what happened is, as soon as I switch on, I get these details. I get the uh, my uh, um, the the payload. I check the payload. Like if it has a connector state, connector ID, connector tick. Important uh, when we do that, so we need to connect to tickets, and that I, I'm checking the connected token here. Uh, here, if it's valid or not. So, and then after that, I'm passing this information into the queue, and then sending this. Uh, a, like we have to return the uh, uh, reply within five seconds, or there is some seconds that the, yeah, the connection has been a request has been received, and uh, it's going to process, etc. But the key is the connector ID and the connector ticket. So I'm putting into another func uh, queue, which will be a connection queue connection. Queue connection is checking if the action is create. Basically, the toggle is yes. We're going to create this one. It's going to create a connection. And if you see here, if I go here, create a connection, uh, and I'm uh, I'm passing the connection message, and if you see here, in part of this request, I'm passing this as the connector ID and connector ticket. And that way, once the connection has been made and data has been inject, uh, ingested, this guy get to know that yes, yes, everything is working, and I know that this connection has been made, data uh, data has been ingested, then it will be fully uh, turned on. So otherwise, it will be in a processing state. So that is the key. So we have to pass the connector ticket in there so he can keep track of what happened with that connection. So if I go back to the connection, so once the um, so once the connection has been made, so we're creating a connection, just simple using the connector API, then I'm creating the connection, creating schema. So if I go to the creating schema, I'll go to the ID, I go to this one, and then I go to 
implementation quickly. So I'm just uh, making an API request and passing these uh, properties because I wanted to I wanted to uh, ingest these properties for my uh, API summary, level, roles, products, uh, title, etc. So you can define your schema like that uh, and whether these properties are retrievable and some probably might be you could see the searchable you can do query define which one is a curable etc so you can define your schema so create a schema so this is the queue connection is creating a schema creating a connection and creating a schema which we saw in the uh, powerpoint presentation once this done is adding a message again into the queue content and that actually function is getting triggered which is based on my uh, is a queue triggered uh, so here is actually I'm ingesting the data. So if you see here, uh, if the action is ingest, it's going to go and call this function ingest content. And here I'm calling this API catalog API service get all module detail. Once I've got all the modules, uh, I mean you can go and check the. If I go and quickly show you, if there's a roughly, is simply uh, I'm uh, I'm just uh, calling API. Uh, and and going through the module and saving into the uh, and returning the result back. This there, there is no uh, special things going on. So please check the code there is available in the app already. So I'm got the learn modules here and then I'm going through each module and creating these items. If I go to the create item implementation. So here's the thing. So for each item we define the ID, we define the ACL. This is the permission. We define the properties, which property we wanted to expose. So we, when we have that kind of payload for each item and then we pass to the Microsoft Graph Connector API and then it basically go and create that. So when we create this, what happened? So I just want to show you what happened behind the scene. So if I go to the search and intelligence page in Microsoft, uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center uh, and you could see here we have this is a connection name. Uh, and once everything is set up, so you you can see here your data will be uh, you can see some sort of quota how much depend on how much to, uh, quota you have used. So if I click on this one, so you can see the status. This uh, connector has been done. Data is a custom connector. How many item has been indexed? What is the item limit? Because it's a custom connector, so you have to have a crawl and schedule by yourself handle. In my case, I have a like a timer content, so it's running. Uh, every day or something, then uh, it is putting a message into the queue. So it's going and adjusting the latest data. It's getting the latest data and uh, uh, in, uh, updating my, um, uh, my existing connection. So that's what happened is behind the scene. You can uh, go to customization and then uh, go to source this one and probably add quickly. It this HS, one. we need to. We need to. We need to. We're running out yeah, of time. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Five okay, minutes so already over time. So. Cool. So yeah, so that's uh, you can update your adaptive card here. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, th that's all from me. If you have any question. Cool. That that's actually really really cool. Thank you, Asa. Sorry for for pushing you no, 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 um, no, no. away no, from no, no. the demo. But it, that, Sorry. that's a super cool demo. Walking through all of the different uh, bits and pieces and and how it actually works. Super useful. Learned a ton by myself as well. Now let's then go to Marcus uh, Miller uh, to talk about the Teams meeting app. Really, very cool. Yes, and by the way, here. HS, if you can paste in the link in the chat uh, for the sample, that would be really awesome. I think it is in the GitHub, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. Cool. Marcus, take it away. Yes, I will do so. Yeah. Hello. I want to talk to you today about automatically create Teams meetings and automatically install meeting apps to this. And finally, write and display some custom data with it. First, something about me, but next, something about the demo. Um, what's the demo about in terms of a scenario? Yeah, on why to do this automatically. Yeah, think about something happens uh, in your organization, like a customer calls, something goes wrong with your product chain or with your delivery chain or something like that. And this might take urgent or lower action. And depending on what happens there, you might have some re responsible persons and then can automatically invite them to a meeting. And to make it a bit simpler. Um, and first, uh, tell you that I'm not cheating. Showing you my calendar for the day. Nothing in there. 
and then at the second glance oops showing you a very innovative thing and good old console application and then let's use that and kick it off. So the first thing happens in the back, you cannot see is something around authentication. Because I do it um, interactively here. So give me some seconds. So for the first thing what happens is I will create a meeting. Yeah so-called in any event in the calendar of one organizer this is me my test person so here you get an event id but that with that alone i'm not really lucky the second thing is what i get with this event is i get a so-called join url this is you know from your team's meeting um as well and with this join url in the third step i already can get a different object called online meeting and with that and this is what i really need because when i have an event and share this event then i have two events one for the organizer one for at least one participant or three for the additional participants and so on but what i need is a single meeting where i will later install the app in and this is in fact the chat so we are talking now from now on either about the chat ID or, and this is here in brackets, about the meeting ID. Yeah, this is the same thing. So this is now we have a meeting with two participants in the background. Hard coded, but doesn't matter. Now, we want to install an app. This app is available in our app catalog. Yeah, and every app as a, an app ID, which you can grab from the manifest. You have, might have seen this first if you ever created a Teams app, yeah, no matter if it's meeting ID, a uh, meeting app or whatever. But this app is valid over tenants. But we want, what we need is get the tenant app ID. Yeah? And this is now here installed. And the third step is that we install this app not only to the meeting, but to the tab, which is shown to the meeting. And we will see this uh, in a minute in our meeting ID. Fourth step and last step is where we install some custom data to some custom data storage. That's all from my console application. Now let's see the results. First, yes, out our meeting. Yeah, looks pretty fine. We recognize the meeting subject. We can open this in a preview. It's not that start, but we see we have something custom here. You might have never seen such a tab. There is our custom tab. Takes a while, but this is our hard coded data here. If we join that app and start that off, because you might know there is a pre-meeting, in-meeting, post-meeting experience. So we can also make this only available in a running meeting or before a meeting. You know, we once have, I did, I did it all the time. Yeah, and here we once again have our server customer opens in a side panel and we have, we have our information. Yeah, looking back to the different processes I originally told you, can be anything, can be something about the customer, can be something about the product, whatever happened before and where the context comes from. Last but not least, where comes the data from? I, oh, where's my mouse? Lost it a bit, oh, there it is. I simply used to use the symbol Azure table for this. Yes, an old uh, thing from January. I refresh it here. Yeah. 
we have our data from today. Yeah, the old hard-coded data is still uh, the same because it's hard-coded in the code, but the code stamp timestamp is clearly from now. And here we also have our meeting ID or chat ID, however you prefer to call it. And that's the result of it. So, flipping back to my slides and show you how it works. First, quickly the architecture once again. Yeah, so I use the console app. This can be any kind of web service, a bot, whatever. But this is uh, the acting uh, thing here that first creates a Teams meeting. Second, it installs the custom app. And third, it writes the custom data. Yeah, depending on the uh, yeah, on the triggered thing, or the triggering thing, um, yeah, whatever happened before. And last not least, the custom app is able to display that custom data. That's all I showed you and is relevant for this small but effective sample. Okay, some code, um, much lines, but easy thing here. Create a Teams meeting. We have a lot of payload here above, some an organizer, at least one attendee, the time zone, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, the main line of code only is using um, graph.net SDK here. It's simply to create an event and post that payload to one user, and that's it. Next thing I did in one step uh, during the present or during the demo is I need to get the chat or meeting ID. Yeah? And here I have the join web URL. And with that, I'm querying, uh, coming from the events, now I'm querying the online meetings yeah? for the users. And with the join URL, then in the result, I get the chat ID. And with that chat ID, I come where I want to install my app later on. But first, I have to identify it. Above, we see an extract from a Teams manifest. We have a manifest version 1.14, but that doesn't matter here. But here, we have a global ID for that application. If I, yeah, for instance, develop an app or develop a uh, sample and you don't download it and start it, you have the same ID for the moment. And that doesn't matter so far. But when you put it to your app catalog, we'll get a different app catalog ID. And this is what I'm doing here later on. So I'm searching for something with an uh, external ID of EC1 blah blah. And then I get an app catalog ID. And this is what I return here as an app ID. In this app ID, I install the next step to my chats. In now yeah, on my chat, installed apps, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and this is what I have here as a parameter. Yeah, and here that's uh, the also known values. Yeah, so the chat ID, you also can say meeting ID to it, and the app ID, you can also say app catalog ID to it, just for your understanding. Okay, um, quick thing about uh, the data. As I said, I used uh, the nature table, and they made it really, really simple. Yeah, you might use it in production, What what I'm doing here, quickly, I use the meeting ID as a key because it's, it's, it is the key more or less. And I use my custom ID as a row key as well. So row key, partition key, sorry. Flipping back. This is what I want to, yeah. So row and partition key for this pose um, parameters. And then uh, last not least, um, the opposite side in the meeting, 
add how to get all that stuff back. Yeah, I get the ID, that is what I was showing. I get the name, the email, and the phone, return it, and yeah, show it in the really simple, yeah, not fancy HTML part. But this was not my case to, uh, yeah, to ping out the, uh, to put out the HTML things, but simply the process, how I can write and get back and how I can connect the backend process and the front end process that, like a meeting ID to show this. Yeah, and this is what you can see in my sample. For all of you who are saying, oh my God, this is C sharp. Oops, once again, I forgot one thing to mention, but not really important here. But uh, yeah, to flipping my, my last slide, I'll say, hey, this is C sharp and so on. This sample comes in two flavors. So I said nearly the same part also here um, in Node.js realized two blog posts about this and two samples in the GitHub PMP repository. You have one um, QR code here. And when you jump to this, you will get to all these links here. They are all connected. So that's from my side. Back to you, Vedo. Excellent. Thank you, Marcus, on that one. Good step-by-step -step clarification, how to achieve those end goals. So these are really, really good because, again, I would love to have some sort of a catalog of these kind of processes. Hey, I need to get an application to Teams uh, meeting and Teams app. These are the URLs to hit. Dun, 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 dun. So really, really useful uh, for understanding that process. Awesome, awesome stuff. Then, Chris, you are next on the on the list. Uh, yo, I guess yo, we can find yo. Some. Well, some color being, you know, horses, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, 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 we'll figure it out. All right, let me uh, let me uh, share this screen here. All right, can you see my screen? I can see, see the face. screen. Take it away. Woo, that's me. I'm Chris. Oh, I've got all the notifications on. Awesome. Okay, great. All right, so we've talked about this a number of times, uh, and I'm just going to quickly review what an SVG is, right? So scalable vector graphic, right? So it's drawn by the browser. Uh, the nice thing about it is it can be dynamically edited, right? Uh, so it's it's kind of like uh, if you took a, oh my gosh, what have I done? Stop it, oh, I can't help myself. All right, focus mode, who needs it, right? All right, so. <laughs> the, you might think that that would work by default, yeah. sorry. Oh my clearly gosh, isn't. <laughs> this is driving, okay. How the heck do I do it? Go away. Okay, we will go a few minutes long today. It's okay, right, let's put go. the focus right, mode we'll on. Done with that. Okay. Boom. okay, so. Scalable vector graphics, drawn by the browser, dynamically edited, that worked really well. Now we'll just ignore it. All right. But the idea here is if you've got a vector graphics, right, it's going to scale real nice and be beautiful, whereas you got something ugly like Bo's face here. Ugh, disgusting as you grow it, right? Um, and you can kind of think of these as like it's the difference between receiving a full cooked meal, which is this roster thing, which is going to get cold and weird, uh, versus a recipe, which you're going to cook hot and fresh right in the browser. There you go. I made that up. That sounds good. And then quickly, I wanted to briefly review this awesome tool by Sergey Sergey. Right. So this is the SP formatter. If you haven't used this yet, I'm going to show this briefly. Uh, this is an awesome way uh, to add an extension right into your browser. It makes connecting with VS Code and all sorts of things a lot easier. And again, we'll take a look at that. This thing is straight up magic. All right. Oh. <laughs> all right, let's go back here. <laughs> I don't know what that was. All right, so we're over our horse's site, and uh, we're going to jump over just to a list so we can see some things here. Now, we talk about these SVGs. SVGs are really, really cool. Uh, they're really powerful, but they're really kind of hard to work with, right? So in list formatting, uh, we have all these samples that can help you, right? So we've got a whole category dedicated SVG. Um, there's actually more than that. Uh, so check those out. Uh, but again, they can be hard to work with because the only thing we get uh, in an SVG with list formatting is we get a view box. That's nice. That's a nice change. But then we only get path elements. So we don't get circles. We don't get recs. We don't get ellipses, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and that can be really irritating. So I work with these a lot. I thought it'd be easier, uh, nice if we have something easier to work with. And so that's what I wanted to show you today. And that would be uh, this. So JSONify is a brand new VS Code extension as of this morning. Right, so we will install it. Uh, yeah, that's great. And we're just going to install JSONify right here. Boom. All right, now we've got ourselves a JSONify. And we come over here. So I've downloaded this uh, SVG. You can see it's this Fang body. I just downloaded it from uh, Flycon. 
right? If I come over here and I'm going to format or let's turn on, you know, format this document so we can see a little better, right? So it's just, it's got a path element. Let's make it so we can see a little better. Let's make that just red or something, right? So we can see that we're previewing the little SVG. Uh, and again, we could go in here and we could rewrite this manually, uh, you know, with JSON. And it's just one path element, so it's not too crazy, right? Uh, or we could use this new extension, right? Convert to SP list format. Or we can just hit that and boom, now we've got ourselves a format, right? So it's taking that SVG and made a column format out of it. And we just come over here and we take literally any column here, we'll take title. Then we're gonna format this column and we're just gonna paste that in there and we'll preview that. Boom, now we didn't send any sizing. So now we've got a giant red dog, right? But that's pretty cool. I didn't have to do anything. Um, and you might notice that this gets even better when we have uh, like say something a little crazier. I've got this from an Inkscape. It's got all this extra junk in here I could sort through. And again, the traditional way was to put it in something like Inkscape, simplify everything, map over CSS properties that were, you know, uh, moonlighting as uh, XML attributes and so on. And a uh, real pain in the, in the, uh, the st uh, stuff. <laughs> that's the word. All right. So you can see that quickly simplifies that. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, we come over here and we've got uh, like one that I drew manually uh, that I wanted to point out here. Um, and that's that not only uh, are we able to do this, it will convert all these things from paths uh, to paths for you, right? So it'll now you could draw with circles and recs and whatever else you want, and now it'll draw with paths, and that's really cool. All right, now what can we do with that SP formatter we talked about? Uh, and that's where I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn that on. So that's an extension I have installed, SP formatter, and I'm going to turn it on for the site. Just enable it, and you see I get this nice little thing here. Uh, one of the cool things about SP formatter right, is that I can uh, come in here and I can connect it, right? So I can start a new session with SP Formatter when I have the uh, VS Code extension installed as well. And when I do that, you can start to see now what I've generated over here actually shows up automatically, right? And in fact, I could even close this guy. Yeah, I'm not gonna save it, right? And we come over here to our bomb and let's say we wanted to change maybe that, uh, that color, right, from that fill. And we're just gonna change it to green just so we can see something different. Oh, we can have a... Yeah, there we go. Now we got a green, right? Just the idea is that it should be a little different. And if we do that again, we see it automatically shows up over there. Uh, so pretty cool, right? We can come over here and we can edit our uh, our bomb here. We can edit it in, uh, no, don't say that. We can edit our bomb in a uh, editor. Where's that? F1, I've got a SVG editor, right? So if I wanted to edit it right here in VS Code, Right, I want to take some of these nodes and so on. I could, I can move things around. I don't, I don't know. The idea is here, if I'm editing all of this here, I can say in VS Code, I can use whatever tools I want. Um, and using this new extension, right, I can see those you know, directly in the browser and it makes working with SVGs significantly easier. Easier. So what's it doing here? And we'll switch back over here, rob it up. There we go. Let's go back to this tool so you can see it. So JSONify, that's this VS Code extension. Right now it's just for SVGs. Uh, We'll see if we can extend that a little further to say HTML and so on. And uh, now we have ourselves, have ourselves, we have a tool already on the site, right? It's an HTML to formatter. Um, and it's a very helpful tool and does a lot of this stuff, but it has a few limitations in that um, it basically just maps over properties regardless of if they're whitelisted or not. So this is doing some of that heavy lifting for you of saying, hey, yeah, yeah, that doesn't work. You can't have that, right? And warning you of those kinds of things um, and getting it as true uh, to uh, actual preview as possible. So uh, that's about it, but check those out. It's free. Uh, that's the link for it, and it works pretty nicely with that SP formatter. And that's all I got. Woo, right on time. Wow, that's that's really, really cool. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, and, and super, super speedy demo as well. I wasn't prepared for this. That you're catching up on the <laughs> on the timeline. <laughs> That's really cool. Let me get uh, screen back. Really, really cool. Um, and good to see that the uh, focus mode doesn't work at all. So, can you see my screen? No, you cannot. Uh, where, where did? Okay, let's try this one more time. There we go. Now you can probably see my screen. Cool. So, thank you, HS. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Chris. Uh, really, really cool. Awesome demos once again today. Uh, we have fully booked uh, demos for upcoming weeks as well. So we're looking into having more Power Platform stuff, more uh, Power Platform Studio, uh, sorry, Copilot Studio stuff is coming next Tuesday and all of that, so really, really cool stuff. Now, in the meanwhile, uh, as you're not probably always sitting and waiting just to this course to happen, it might be doing work and it might be running into some problems. We also have multiple ways of helping you. Of course, use the social media, use the LinkedIn. Uh, a Discord server is a relatively new option. Uh, if you are in the Discord and you are already using that, we wanted to offer this option 
description as well, because those who are in Discord, they probably want to use Discord. And we already have more than 1,500 members within this server helping with the questions. So please sign up uh, there as well, and, and you can ask questions. You can engage with other people in the community. Uh, and the attendance here is growing all the time as well, which is really, really cool. Now, we also want to always uh, request feedback. Uh, feedback is super important for us, so we're able to keep on keeping these calls in the future as well, as our management chain and the leadership is always asking on, are these calls actually useful? So we're asking you to give us feedback uh, related on the feedback form. So we're able to keep on providing back uh, the input for the leadership that these calls are hopefully important for you and, and valuable for you. Now, the recording of this one will be available in the YouTube channel within 24 hours. Uh, uh, we, you cannot access the recording directly from chat. That does not work for anybody else than Microsoft employees uh, who are in this call. Uh, so we'll get it to our place. Typically, it's there probably like uh, midnight Pacific time to the end of today, if you are in Pacific time, but that's like 9 a.m. GMT uh, tomorrow. So that's typically the timing, but I can't promise that. So 24 hours, it will be there. You can recap some things. Uh, the next M365 Power Platform bi-weekly call is on February 15th. Viva Connection SharePoint Framework next week on February 8th at 7 a.m. and other calls at AKMS Community Calls. But that's it for today. Thank you everybody for joining and really, really cool demos. Awesome to see the interactive discussion in the chat as once again and keep the feedback coming. Thanks everybody. Let's stay in touch. Bye-bye.